Have you ever noticed that there is a ton of information out there about relationships? But in my experience, they never actually define the word love. I feel like most authors out there have this misconception that we all have this healthy view of love and we were all taught how to love in a healthy way, but we're just not doing it right. Well, I don't know about you, but I didn't have very many healthy relationships modeled for me when I was growing up. I became an adult having been taught that if you don't conform and behave in this certain way, it's okay to withhold love. Or if someone disappoints you, that's another reason to withhold love. In my opinion, that's pretty messed up. However, as an adult, that's what I see being modeled in so many families. How would you like to be part of changing how the next generation loves? How would you like to be part of transforming the way people love and making 1 Corinthians 13 the new normal? Hello, sweet friends. I'm Lisa with the Be Sweet family. So as you could probably tell a little bit there, um, I'm brand new at this and so I do have to read a little bit as I go along today, so I'm just asking for your patience. Also, as you can tell, I'm kind of in a new studio, and so my wall is pretty bare. I'm in the process of painting and getting some things up on it, so please bear with me for the boring atmosphere. Hopefully, I'm just so entertaining that you just stay for the, for the content. So anyway, it will get more exciting as the weeks come, I promise, but um, just Bear with me a little bit today for our introduction. So I'm going to go ahead and continue on um, and tell you a little bit about Radiant Love and how it was born. Um, when my daughters and I started our YouTube channel, The Be Sweet Family, it was during lockdown in 2020. And we had so much fun doing this. The time that we got to spend together was amazing. Um, our goal at that time was to share love and to spread some kindness through the YouTube channel, through some fun videos. And then of course, Megan and I had some nonsense happening as well. And then also just through some um, really positive uh, social media posts. And so we did that for a while, but then life took over again. Um, and so schedules, schedules got busy and we set our mission aside for a little while, but God never took it off my heart. It continued. And I continued thinking about it and trying to figure out what the next step was going to be. With the others busy with work and school, I'll primarily be the face of the Be Sweet family. Uh, we'll still do some videos together as our schedules align, but uh, they are really busy with work and school, so they're not, they're not around very often. The message that God has laid on my heart to get out to you all is that I want to transform the way we love each other. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, right? So simple, let's change the world. Well, I have a definition for love and it comes from 1 Corinthians 13. Um, the snippet that I'm gonna read right now is verses four through the beginning of verse eight. Love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, and it is not proud. It does not dishonor others. I have a really old NIV version uh, Bible as well. And actually that it does not dishonor others part says it is not rude. That wording speaks a little bit more clearly to me. So I kind of like that one better. Um, but the rest of the verse continues like this. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres, love never fails. I don't know about you, but I do not see a lot of that kind of love in our world today. My whole life has been trying to figure out why some relationships are successful and why others fail. Um, why it seems like God speaks so clearly in some seasons and then he is radio silent in others. I will also touch on some topics about um, how different it is parenting those littles compared to the exciting gray hair inducing journey of parenting teens. And then also my favorite topic, the one I think is the most important, is bringing hope back into your marriage when you feel like all is lost. 
Now, the reason I think that is so important is because top-down love is really what sets the tone for the family. And so I think it's really important that we really, that we look at the marriage relationship and um, I mean, let's get it as loving as possible, right? Let's get that top-down love and let's teach our kids, let's teach that next generation what love really looks like. My truest heart's desire is to speak directly to those of you who want to learn how to love in all areas of life in a way that brings glory to God. Now, I know just a little bit ago, I read you just that snippet of 1 Corinthians 13, but now I want to read you the whole thing. So if you've got your Bible handy and you want to open it, if you want to pull up your um, digital Bible on your phone or your device or whatever, you're welcome to read along with me. This is 1 Corinthians 13, 1 through 13, the NIV version. So here we go. If I speak in the tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship, that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy. <clears throat> It does not boast, it is not proud, it does not dishonor others, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not rejoice, does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. But where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when completeness comes, what is in part disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put the ways of childhood behind me. For now, we see only a reflection as in a mirror then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall fully know, even as I am fully known. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. There's one other verse I'd like to share with you, and it was instrumental in determining our direction for um, the Be Sweet family and this new Radiant Love uh, show, podcast, blog. That verse is Psalms 34, verse 5. Those who look to him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. Now, when I read that verse, that word radiant, it absolutely struck me. And I thought, I want to be radiant. That sounds amazing. So I wanted to look up and see what does radiant actually mean. So in the dictionary, there are, um, for the adjective radiant, I've got two definitions here, and the first one is emitting rays of light, shining bright. The second definition is bright with joy, hope, etc. Now, in my brain, I finish that second definition with the fruits of the Spirit. And who doesn't want to shine bright with love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control? I mean, that sounds pretty great, doesn't it? So those two powerful verses are how Radiant Love was born. If you are as excited as I am about radiating love in this crazy, crazy world, please join us every week right here on YouTube. If you prefer to read, um, as I said earlier, we do have a blog at b-sweet.com. And then also, which it's not up yet, but it should be in a few days, it'll be on um, where your favorite, you can find it where your favorite podcast is. So Radiant Love is the name of it there as well. Next week, um, I will start with the truth that every single person on this planet that lived before, that is alive now, and will live in the future is different from every single person who ever lived on this planet. By understanding that truth, we're going to learn how we can love ourselves better and how we love others better.
As cheesy as it may sound, I truly do believe this is what God has been preparing me for through all the crazy stuff that he has walked me through in my life. I've been his student seeking to understand people and relationships for decades. And now it's finally time for me to share what he has taught me with all of you. I wish you could feel the passion and excitement that I'm feeling as my dream of changing the way we love becomes a reality through Radiant Love by Lisa from the Be Sweet family. So let's really transform the way the world does love. Let's take it from that messed up way that has been snowballing for generations. And let's bring it back to 1 Corinthians 13. Let's bring glory to God. So I will see you here next week when we talk about loving all those unique people. Until next time, bye.